Hello and welcome to Surveyor Says, the podcast from the National Society of Professional Surveyors. Each week, we bring you fascinating guests that are involved in the profession of surveying. We cover a lot of ground, including Table Lay Talk with Gary Kent, Point of Order with the NSPS Joint Government Affairs Team, Future Focus, highlighting current and future leaders of the profession, and everything survey-related in between. Thanks for joining us here on the podcast, and hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Surveyor Said. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Surveyor Says. Uh, this is your host, Tim Birch, and we are on location. Well, actually, we just wrapped up the FIG, not FIG, FIG Working Week 2024 in Accra. I gotta keep saying Accra. I don't know why I always want to say Accra. Accra, Ghana. And we are sitting here today uh, with, uh, again, I'm excited for this conversation, uh, of two young surveyors that made the trek clear over. Uh, one from Arizona. You know her, you love her, Farah Achaveri. And another one from Chicago, the Chicago area. Former Minnesota, former uh, Iowan, yep. former Iowan. I don't know why, why, why am I stuck on the Minnesota thing? Cause you Here's another Marcus from Minnesota. Oh no, not, <laughs> no. I hope Marcus from Minnesota doesn't hear this. Uh, but Marcus Schmidt from, uh, from the Chicago area. Um, I know I've known Marcus for a number of years now. We had some, uh, some common, common contacts back in the Chicago area, but uh, no, it's, uh, it's, it's great to be among familiar faces here in Ghana. Uh, we were looking forward to this trip uh, somewhat, but you know, like, you know, like we're going to get into, I was a little apprehensive coming over first, first time on the continent. It's the furthest south I've ever been. And don't kid yourself, it's hot. Mm-hmm. It's been hot all week. Um, you know, when they say, you know, Dallas, Phoenix, it's a dry heat. Well, it is a dry heat. This was just it, I think it never really got over 90, but the humidity was always over 90 percent. So yeah. the feels like has been. Any, but anyway, uh, it's been a great week. Uh, tell you what, Farah, ladies first. Let's just start for those who aren't don't know who Farah is. Just give us a little who you are, a little bit of your background and uh, why surveying. Sure, sure. My name is Farah Echeverry. I am from Arizona, as Tim said. I am not in the Phoenix area, but it is very hot where I'm from too. I'm northern Arizona, closer to Sedona. But uh, I started land surveying with my dad quite a few years ago. Um, Decided to go back to school just a couple of years ago to get my degree in surveying and mapping. And I have been involved with NSPS and um, the Arizona Professional Society for a number of years now. Um, I helped start Arizona's Young Surveyors Network and that's kind of how I got involved with FIG. And uh, with that, that's how I am here today. So happy to have this conversation Very today. Very nice. Marcus, how about you? Besides probably getting your arm twisted by Tim Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, de- a little bit of twisting. No, I mean... Yes. Uh, encouragement. Encouragement, yeah. So like you mentioned earlier, I uh, grew up in Iowa. Um, went, didn't really know what I wanted to do uh, as far as... Uh, you know a career or anything like that so I went to a community college took a program that uh, gave it was a civil engineering tech program so they gave you a little taste of like soil testing drafting surveying um, and I f- like surveying so right after college I I took my first surveying job uh, in Iowa and then I met my wife um, we moved over to Chicagoland area and then after that, since Illinois requires a bachelor's degree, I finished up my degree at Northern Illinois University and have been... Go Huskies. Yeah, go Huskies. <laughs> have been working in the Chicagoland area for the past nine years and uh, two years ago uh, became a PLS. Very good. Well, and in addition to this, uh, you're both obviously very involved in young, young, the Young Surveyors Network. Uh, what is it about belonging to that group, the NSPS uh, YSN, that, I mean, why belong? What does it mean to belong to a group? You're part of a younger generation that the only groups you're in are Snapchat groups or WhatsApp groups. I mean, but this is a professional uh, professional group. 
What, why, why, why won't we want to be involved in that? Well, I, I always appreciate that it's like you're using your profession and you're instantly bonded to these uh, surveyors that you're networking with. Um, and it also provides you like an outlet for your career growth. Like, do I like my job? Do I not like my job? What, what, are, the, what are the things that are frustrating about your job? And you can come to this community uh, of, of young surveyors and express those feelings, have a great conversation, and they can uh, give you advice and you're, because you're all in the same situation. You're contemporaries. Yeah. Very good. Farah, you took it another step. You didn't have a group, have a YSN in Arizona, so you helped spearhead putting this thing together. Yes, I helped start it. Yeah, Arizona has been without a Young Surveyors Network for well over a decade. Um, and in 2022, um, a couple of buddies and myself decided we wanted to end, end the dry spell. Um, so we got a hold of our state association and made sure we had the proper backing and support, which of course we did. They were very excited to have a couple of young surveyors that were ready to uh, take on the challenge of starting our Young Surveyors Network. And so we got it going in 2022 and we've grown quite a bit in the last mm -hmm. year and a half. It's very exciting. Um, we have a lot of outreach going on within our state, um, and we even have Nevada coming over to help us sometimes, which has been a lot of fun. So it's been a great adventure so far. Oh, good. Uh, so which brings me into, I guess, the, the next topic of FIG, Young Surveyors Network. Now, Marcus, you're you're the veteran here. You, <laughs> uh, uh, you've been involved with this uh in, in the past a little bit yeah uh, with with uh, our, our Orlando meeting last year yeah so I, I had the the privilege to help out and kind of organize the Orlando FIG event and uh, so far like the FIG young surveyors event is, is interesting in a way that you're dealing with these these global issues that you don't necessarily realize are issues in the United States and, and so that's been a really eye-opening experience but then you sit down with these young surveyors and they're, they have the same interests, the same questions that you have, and they're from completely different parts of the world. And so, and so that's really amazing to, to see and be a part of. So I guess my question then is gonna be, I mean, that was a, that was a meeting and, and this whole network little uh, conference was on our turf. What I guess what what uh, what made you want to come to the following year here in in Accra? Uh, is it, uh, I guess what what was the draw to to make the, make this trip? Uh, I I would say the number one thing is just to continue the relationships that you built in Orlando. I mean, the the people that I met in Orlando, it was like an instant friendship. Um, and you really wanted to see those people again, and you really wanted to hear the progress that they were doing internationally and that we're doing in the states, uh, in our local and state, or national networks as well. Well, good. Farah, I guess, uh, not, I guess a similar question to you. At what point did you decide, yeah, I wouldn't mind trying to, to make the trip to, to Ghana for, for this, because I will, because then the, the lead up question is, and uh, how did you hear about the, uh, the scholarship opportunity for a grant to, to help pay for the trip to come here? Yeah, good question. So those two things kind of go hand in hand a little bit. Um, I certainly wouldn't, I don't think this would have necessarily been on my radar had the grant not been a possibility. And so mm -hmm. um, moving forward, it's definitely on my personal agenda to uh, help some other young surveyors in the application process um, moving forward so that more young surveyors have an opportunity to come um, to an event like this because it's been pretty incredible. So um, I got I heard of FIG a year or two ago, but I haven't been super involved. Um, a couple of my professors in college had mentioned the potential of a grant, um, but I finally bit the bullet uh, right after it opened, I guess, when I saw it in the Women's Survey Summit group on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And the, sure. those ladies were very, very encouraging to all of the younger women in the group apply for the grant. 
Um, so I threw my name in the hat and honestly, I didn't think it was going to get it. So, uh, I mean, I felt like my application was pretty good, but there's so many incredible young surveyors across the globe. Um, it, it's a little intimidating to kind of shoot your shot there, but yeah, the draw to um, fill out the grant to potentially have the opportunity to fly halfway across the world and meet other people who do the same thing as you, um, that was a huge motivator for me. I wanted to see what, what young surveyors in, on the African content think. And interestingly enough, as Marcus said, they, we all think very similarly, which has been a really neat revelation. <laughs> exactly. Well, and, and for the listeners, don't, don't, she's selling herself short. She was, there were four scholarships given out of, I think, a, what do you say, 130 yeah. applications? Uh, and you're the first recipient from the U.S. in eight or ten years. Yes. Um, so I think your application was pretty good because um, uh, the other ones were Nigeria, Finland, Finland. There were quite and Colombia. Colombia, yeah. yes. Yes, so uh, that's pretty tall order. So, all right, so uh, you get over here. Um, what... What was your experience stepping off that plane into uh, a whole nother world? It has been quite the experience. Uh, I think Marcus and I have both decided that experience is just the word that we have used to describe this entire week. That's what it's been. It's just been an experience. Uh, from the moment we got off the plane, we instantly felt the heat and the humidity. So that, that was number one. Um, relatively small airport. Uh, navigating through customs, immigration, all that stuff was just, it was like kickstarting the whole thing. So you're suddenly hyper aware that you are in a very, very new place. Um, but just from arrival, everybody's been incredibly kind. Uh, the people here are, are amazing. Uh, there's been nothing but honestly happiness. Like you get here and it's, people are just genuinely very happy. Um, and it's been, of course, amazing to meet other young surveyors and other industry professionals and all these things all gathering in this place. But with that being said, for all of the good that has come with, with being here and the majority of it is good, it has also been uh, a big shock um, to come to a third world country and kind of see the state of things, um, especially from a surveyor's perspective. And as Marcus was saying, we're talking about more global issues here, more issues that we don't necessarily think about when we're doing cadastral surveying back at home, you know, I'm not thinking about global warming or climate change or anything like that when I'm doing topo surveys in Arizona, but um, those are big issues that we're talking about here. And so seeing a place so different from where I'm from and the state that people, different people are living in um, has been eye-opening, but also one of the more difficult parts of this trip to navigate. How about you, Marcus? Stepping off the plane was... Yes, yeah, ste stepping off the plane, like, we, we flew in in the morning, and, and like Ferris said, you were just hit with the heat. And then on top yes. of that, we were exhausted. So we were hit with the heat, we were exhausted, and we were in this brand new world. Like, it was, like, it just got real. Like, yes. <laughs> we, are, we are in Africa. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, even the trip to the, uh, you know, we got into our shuttle, and it's just a little car, and the seatbelts were like locked behind, like you yep. couldn't even use a seatbelt. You're like, okay, I guess this is how we're gonna play it. <laughs> yes. But but when we were on the plane, it was such a great experience. Um, there was a lot of Ga Ghanaians on our flight, and Farah and I were sitting in two different places of the plane, and then I was sitting next to this older lady, and she was from Ghana, and. She was like telling me about her culture and very proud about Ghana. And I was thinking like, well, you're in this third world country as you know, we see it in the US, but she's just like, it's the best country in the world. I would never want anything else. And then she was insistent of like, here, take my number. <laughs> when you, the next time you're back to Ghana, like I'll cook for you, I'll, I'll put you up in my house. Oh, and that's then- sweet. Mm -hmm. And then it was so funny because I, I told Fair that story after we got off the plane and she's like, that same exact experience happened to me. I sat next to an older lady who, <laughs> from Ghana that 
put had me put her number in her plane. Yeah. And she wanted and to, she wanted to check up on me, and she called me she the called next you. day. <laughs> she absolutely did. Yeah, they're very genuine. There's no doubt about oh. that. They they really do care. We've felt that I think since we got here, people care about you. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's that was your what you're describing was my experience as well. I guess what sh- was a little bit of a shock to me was uh, was the infrastructure here. Mm-hmm. The some of the roads are pretty decent, but then you get in, you know, we've got a highway, a, f- a four lane divided highway in front of our hotel. That there are places where you have to literally stop because it's down to the gravel, down to the base, and um, it's just it's 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 interesting. But yeah. we get here, we're into this conference. Um, you all, you both start with uh, the young surveyors, basically a pre-event, mm-hmm. a day and a half conference. Uh, Vera, it's your first one. Yeah. Tell me what that experience was like for you and some of the things that you you all did throughout that day and a half yeah we had a great time the young surveyors conference before the working week was I think it was just what we needed before we had a very intense few days of sessions and technical technical sessions and working groups and things like that so um, young surveyors are fun for anybody that's never that is, is, doesn't have a network, uh, needs to be connected, you really gotta reach out um, because you need to get connected with a group of young surveyors, they're a blast. So we started the uh, conference off with some keynote speakers that were super amazing. Um, one of them in particular I met was the Surveyor General in Australia and I absolutely loved her entire talk. Um, and so that's just one great example of I heard her talk, I went and told her that I loved it, and now we've exchanged information and we've shared some drinks and we've laughed and we've talked about all the things and it's been fantastic. So we listened to some great speakers and then we've also been doing a lot of collaborative work while we're here talking about how we can improve the FIG Young Surveyors Network and um, what the vision is going forward. And it's just been a lot of fun and very insightful because while we all we all share a lot of things, there's a lot of commonality, we also have different ideas based off of where we are coming from geographically. And so it's been really neat to try and find innovative solutions to some of the problems that we're seeing from all sorts of different perspectives. Yeah, very good. Uh, shout out to Norell Underwood. Oh, yes. Nell is fantastic. I loved um, her. Yeah, that was uh, a great presentation. It was yeah, fantastic. she's she's a great speaker. She's a she's a great uh, just a great body of knowledge um, and and a dynamo so yes. absolutely big big fan of Norell's um, what about your experience I mean you've been through a couple of these now uh, was it was it what what you were hoping to come here for oh yeah absolutely and I I always compare like the young surveyors portion of FIG working week to the actual working week mm-hmm. and you can just tell there's a difference in energy yeah and I, I don't know if uh, any of you are familiar with like the FIG Young Surveyors logo, but it's got a fl- it's the FIG logo that's got a flame on top flame. of it. Yep. Yeah, and that that's really where the passion is, mm-hmm. and you can hear it throughout the entire week. Is like the FIG or the FIG Young Surveyors are the future. Like these are the future leaders. These are the people that are going to get things done for us. Like let's put resources into this group, yeah. and it really shows, uh, especially in the presentations. I mean, everybody. All the young surveyors that got up there, you know, killed it on their killed presentations, it. and nice. you just felt more energized, you know, after every presentation versus mm-hmm. going to some of the uh, plenary sessions. And yeah, uh, yeah. a couple of them were a little dry, a little, dry. A little more academic, <laughs> but uh, exactly. uh, it, it was good. It was it was a fun conference, and then we had um, an event afterwards hosted by Leica, and they just it was a wonderful event of. Uh, dancing and food and just hanging out and uh, networking with all these young surveyors just being in our own element yep yeah. well I guess that that's also a shout out to Craig Hill yes. uh, <laughs> Craig Hill and Leica has been a stalwart for years on supporting the the young surveyors conference and uh, continues to do so so shout out to Craig because uh, Craig you, you know the term rock star keeps getting thrown around a little too much <laughs> anymore but Craig is a rock star. He really is. He really is. So, um, anything more you want to add as far as the, the Young Surveyors the conference part of it? 
Um, I guess I would just point out as well that we, the young surveyors, want to be able to give back, and so they also hosted a charity event, which Leica also helped with. Um, so we all went and played volleyball on the beach, um, and so fun for us, and also a, fu a fun way for us to give back a little bit to some charities, uh, which I think is important. Which, while that sounds kind of like Baywatch, <laughs> Paradise, whatever, unfortunately uh -huh. in Accra, in this whole co area of the coast, this isn't really to detract from the conversation or the, the location, um, here on the, the, uh -huh. the southern coast of this part of Africa, the beach, uh, it's not exactly pristine. No. Uh, unfortunately, the coastal tides, and uh, it collects a lot of a lot of debris. Um, this is probably one of the main places in the Atlantic, at least, that they are collecting all the plastics, um, and because so much of it just washes up from around. So, playing volleyball on the beach was probably it was an interesting experience. Interesting. Yes, yes it, interesting. Sure was. it was no uh, Top Gun beach beach volleyball. Yeah, no. there you go, Top Gun. There you go. There's the other one, yeah. Top Gun. That's probably a, a little, little different. A little different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was. It was a great event, but then, you know, you have this, uh, you're in Ghana, and you're part of this third world country that has, you know, all this trash washing up on the beach, which is unfortunate, and you're, like, playing around it, essentially, and it's just, like, that realization, like, this beach is forever going to be this way unless we do something. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and it's a, it's a shame. Um, you know, that's something we didn't mention in coming to, to Ghana, to Accra, was, you know, part of the prep, besides having to get, having to send our, our uh, passports off to get a, 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 a Ghana visa, uh, we had to be vaccinated for yellow fever, which there hasn't been a case of yellow fever in decades, but that's still something you do. And uh, because of the water here, it's not, really not, uh, not uh, potable so a lot of bottled water and taking malaria pills just to be on the safe side and the locals know that and that you see them doing it the, the same so it that kind of takes you out of your norm that you can't yes. you're you're brushing your teeth with bottled, bottled water, water which feels weird but uh at the end of the day it's hey it, it's what you do to to, to stay healthy yeah. so yeah I guess, so coming out of the young surveyors, you're coming off this high of all of this energy with young surveyors. Um, you already let the cat out of the bag that the, the uh, technical sessions are a little dry, but, <laughs> which is true. Is that I mean, there, there were fantastic ones as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So I, I what, think there was, what, 200 different presentations during the week? Like, it, it's amazing yes. how large this event is. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, what, I would also like for you to uh, kind of help explain what was being built here while we, sh I mean, we showed up and the area where the plenary sessions and the exhibition hall, it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, it, um, interestingly, when we arrived and we were getting ready for the Young Surveyors part of the conference, there was not a whole lot going on here either. There was no signage on, at registration, even though we still needed to go and register. There was um, the, there was a lack of signage everywhere. There was a lack of people. We were Marcus and I were both like, "Where where's everybody at? What are we doing?" Uh huh. Um, but by Saturday evening, Sunday morning for sure, uh, the place was buzzing. The tent outside was up, and all of the exhibitors had, were moving in, and the amount of um, air conditioning units that have been oh, wheeled yeah. <laughs> around is actually pretty incredible. All of a sudden there's signs and insignias and all of the sort of hum of the conference starts in um, and that's when sort of the working week like excitement started. Um, so it was kind of fun to see because we did come down off a of high like the, the young surveyors had a great time mm -hmm. and then there's this weird change of pace when the actual working week started. Well, yeah, it's impressive. Like you said, when we arrived, uh, you know, two days early for the Young Surveyors Conference, the, the FIG Working Week doesn't officially start until Monday. Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And just to see within the 28 to 48 hours, yeah. this giant tent exhibition hall yeah. conference center literally being built from the ground up 
was wild. Yeah. Like they mm-hmm. they ob- they didn't have enough space within their current conference center that they built a whole another one just for this event. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, and did we mention the intermittent uh, rolling blackouts? <laughs> Where the power will just go off for no reason? Mm, yes. <laughs> that do happen. Um, that, that, that was always interesting, and the locals just take it in stride. They absolutely do take it in stride. Almost every time that we were in, one, when we were in the Young Spurriers Conference, anytime that happened, somebody from the crowd would shout, Welcome to Accra! <laughs> so, yeah, they do. They, they make light of it. Um, but I'm sure, well, I won't speak for Marcus, but I know for me, it, it was just stunning. It was like, wow, I will never take for granted the what it's like back at home because this is it's just a bizarre thing to to deal with just regularly right just every few hours it seems it's like oh yeah we're we're out of power for a few minutes okay cool we're we're still going it doesn't stop them yep well yeah it's just one of those things that if you're in the united states you don't have to worry about like your presentation getting interrupted or not having internet Internet. access like some of these people had a presentation the power went out and couldn't get it back up. They couldn't get it back up, so they had to uh, try to power through power through their presentation yeah. without showing any of the slides, with trying to describe them. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you really tough. had to. Yeah, it was a challenge. Yeah, that would be very interesting. Oh boy. So yeah, you have to have a backup plan. <laughs> yeah, print print your slides <laughs> before you. Before yep, you exactly. Uh, so. Uh, off the high of the YSN, you're dealing with the, the technical, I mean, but uh, like you said, there's some good stuff, and you do come away learning some things. Oh, yeah. But let's talk about the evenings. The evenings here, besides still being hot, uh, we all got on shuttle buses and went to a Gahanian uh, celebration on Monday night, um, which was interesting, hot, with a blackout. Yes. Um, which was, was quite interesting. Um, but uh, uh, we invited you to come along with us for our commission dinner as well. Yes. Uh, what was it like getting along with uh, with some of these? I mean, these were uh, let's see. Commission two is education. Ed, uh, three is um, spatial data, and commission ten is construction uh, uh, management and such. Um, a whole different ball game with some of these yeah. some of these people. Yeah, I mean, I w- the people are incredibly down to earth. That's just yeah. what I yes. want to yeah. reiterate. Like you're talking to these people, and they're from all these different countries in this world, and they are leading, mm-hmm. you know, cadastral surveyors or the you know, developing these uh, construction management programs. And then you're just having conversations that are, you know, are, are just very down to earth. And, and you're like, oh, you, <laughs> you know, you're not as intimidated, especially going yeah. to like some of the dinners and, and socializing right. with them. Right. Yeah, I agree. Well, you see somebody's title on paper and as a young surveyor, there can be this like moment of feeling quite intimidated by people's accomplishments. It's like, these are things that you want to be able to do within your career and you're talking to somebody who's been there, done that, made it. Um, so before you get to know them, it can you can feel rather intimidated, but I agree with Marcus. Every event, every dinner, every meal we sat down to, we're talking to these people who I admire, I look up to, you know, people have been asking, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I can point to like different people around here, I'm like, I want to be like that, like that woman when I grow up. And, um, so they're very down to earth. I don't. Everybody makes the young surveyors feel not just welcome. It's not that we. It's not even just a feeling of being welcomed. It's a feeling of also being valued. Exactly. Um, and they, yeah, there there is a, a sense of being mm-hmm. and belonging here. Um, that people really want you to be part of something, which is really nice. Uh, last night was the big gala dinner. That was an experience into itself. <laughs> um, the original setup was going to be outside. Uh, we did have some torrential storms came through <laughs> in the afternoon <laughs> that they were they weren't completely expecting, so they changed the venue sometime in the morning and set up in this place. Um, I think they pulled it off for not 
having, I mean, less they, than 24 hours. Yeah, they absolutely plans. did. Yeah. I mean, you got to have a backup plan when you're planning anything outside. And so uh, it was a nice evening. I enjoyed it. Uh, everyone was dressed up really mm -hmm. nice. And uh, it, it was great to have uh, dancing going on. They had, I think they had a DJ and then they also had a band, like a yes. local band playing as oh, well. Yeah. So they were getting us to dance to their lo music, music and having presenting like their local dances from Ghana, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And so we got to, you know, they were all trying to show us, uh, you know, how to dance. And of course I have two left feet. So I'm this <laughs> yeah. guy from the U S that's just like, what is he doing up yeah. there? But it, it was all, Oh, you weren't fun. the only one, you, <laughs> only, you weren't the only U S guy that was looking goofy. <clears throat> Davy Edwards. <laughs> no, actually Davy can dance. That's, Davey can dance. He can dance. So that's giving, giving him a hard time. So no, it was a good evening. It was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised they pulled it off as spectacularly as they did. Yeah. Food was good. Uh, like I said, overall, it was just, it was a great night. And, yeah, uh, I agree. We, they just really want to wrap you in the culture. And that's been really fun. So it's like you're here, you're here for a specific purpose and you want to come away having learned technical things and, you know, be able to go back to your state associations and say, this is what I took away from the event um, that's related to surveying. But then there's so much more to it than that. And the people here have absolutely just wanted to immerse everybody that's not from the African content in their culture, in their food, in their dialogue, uh, teaching us little slang bits of their language yeah. so we can just everybody becomes the it just you get more and more relatable as the week Pigeon, goes right? on Pigeon, yeah, yeah exactly yeah and that's been so fun yep that was interesting that was yeah it was interesting that what, what, just i don't know if it's a really a language or a dialect yeah. or what do they want to call it it's pigeon yeah. it's <laughs> little little sayings that that translate across yeah, I mean, it's, it's literally English mixed with their local language. Their local like, language. one word is English, one word is their local language. There's the slang. It, uh, it's very cool. It's yeah, it is cool. quite interesting. Um, so, I guess in summation, part of this is, part of the intent of getting your feedback on this is really to entice that, that next round of... of young surveyors that would want to do this. And uh, next year we will be in Brisbane, Australia, and we're gonna be starting on putting together a selection process for, uh, for NSPS young surveyors to be able to, to be considered to go for this. Um, I guess, Farrah, what, what would you say would be a couple of major points that someone could really look forward to in making this commitment because Brisbane's a long way away. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have to do some work to qualify for yeah. qualify for a grant or something, whatever, and or you'll know, get help. Maybe get the state affiliate to help with the mm -hmm. or local chapter, whatever, um, and to get the time off because mm -hmm. uh, it is it is the uh, April sixth through the tenth. Um, it's not well. I shouldn't say it's not. In, it's not. The busy, busy season it just depends on where you are. It does. Um, in the yeah, down down south, it's going to still be busy anyway. Yeah. What would you say would be a couple of points to really be uh, that would it make this makes this attractive? As an encouragement, I would just say firstly that nothing worth having comes easily. So, I mean, for me personally, the grant process was a process. I, it required a lot of writing, a lot of documentation, and submitting of all sorts of things. It took me a lot of time to put it together. Um, and it was worth it. And so whatever NSPS comes up with as far as a selection process for next year, that would be my encouragement, is that it's absolutely worth your time and effort to really put your best foot forward to be given the opportunity to come. Some of the major takeaways and amazing things for me that have made the whole trip worth it Primarily, I would say the networking is huge. Some of the people that I have met here, I would have never, ever, ever otherwise met. And I now have contacts that I would not have dreamed of in another world that I would have. And they're not just contacts, they're people that have said, get a hold of me, you know, mm -hmm. I wanna, let's collaborate on something. Or if you need anything, I'm here to help you. And as a young surveyor, that is really invaluable. Um, on a practical sense, of course, we did get to sit in on some really incredible sessions. 
some very, very smart people here, and more, almost more importantly, some very, very passionate people. So if you're feeling a little run down in your daily grind, this has been reinvigorating, um, and I think that that's huge. And Brisbane's not going to be a bad spot to go. Either. Not at all. A <laughs> little bit of a long plane ride, but it's going to be okay. Marcus, what's, what are the takeaways and uh, what would incentivize somebody to want to try to do this? I mean, just take advantage of these opportunities, I would say. Uh, this international event, despite it being like an international event, it's surveying, right? You, you're, and you're talking to people that are, are leading the industry, and they're going to provide you invaluable wisdom that that will help you build your career um, I always leave these conferences just absolutely invigorated to do more in my state and uh, national organizations like it's just kind of reignites my fire after you know you work hard and then you come to these events and then you're like yes I want to do better things within my career within uh, my daily work um, and just say yes to some of these opportunities. Like I, yes. I want to it rid it, it. I want to say that, like, you know, I could never imagine that I'd be traveling to Africa for surveying. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. mind, my mind is blown. Yeah. <laughs> like when I told people I was going to Africa for a survey conference, they're like, "Really?" I'm like, "Yeah, there's opportunities out there. You just have to say yes." Yeah, that's such a great point, and I think. Um, yeah, touching on that as well. If you get the opportunity to come, just saying yes. There were things that both of us, I think, were asked to do when we got here after the fact. There's things that we were asked to do that we were well prepared for. We knew ahead of time we were going to be doing them. And so you could think about it. You could write about it. You could you, right. you were mentally prepared for the this talk you were going to give or the presentation you were going to give. But there were also things that people approached us about after we got here. And I think the like a huge piece of advice would be don't say no to any of those opportunities. Take every single one, even if it makes you nervous, even if you don't feel fully prepared. Say yes to all of them because you you don't know what the outcome is going to be in the end of all that. Yeah, and I'm I I am not a presenter that uh, it feels comfortable talking in front of people, but I, I put myself out there because yeah. I I want to build up my career. I want to get better at it, and uh, it it's a nice challenge. Well, and doing that in front of your your contemporaries, you know, at your peers, it sure is a lot easier than getting up in front of mm -hmm. the local chapter, the state board, the, yeah. the, the national, whatever. And it's it's yeah, you you, you kind of you kind of build up that little bit of a little bit of a confidence boost mm -hmm. yeah, to absolutely. be able to do it. So, well, I tell you what, this is uh, I, I was hoping to capture a great conversation and the essence of what's happened in this this week. Um, I completely agree with everything you've said. It's been, it's been an experience. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the people have been great. Uh, the food's been good. Uh, weather has been interesting simply because it's been so hot. <laughs> yes. uh, we did get caught in a rainstorm uh, one night. I mean, it was only supposed to be sprinkles, and it was a full-on monsoon. Yeah. So um, I found it interesting walking through uh, the courtyard because... It, Actually, I don't know how it was, what, eight or it's six or eight hotel rooms in these little huts. Mm -hmm. And you're walking through these courtyards, and there's signs that say, watch out for coconuts. <laughs> yeah. And you'll go, what? Yes. And all of a sudden, you'll hear them go, thump. Oh, yep, yep. <laughs> and they do fall. They sure do. And I finally did, walking over here, I finally saw a lizard. Oh. I saw a lizard today, too. Yes. Oh, yeah. So they, they do exist. Um, it is a little bit different. Well... You come from the desert, though. Yeah. It's you probably I see, see a lot of things. Pretty often, but <laughs> uh, you got rattlesnakes. The coconuts, I'm not sure about though. That. The coconuts. coconuts. Marcus and I both had the pleasure of getting to drink the uh, coconut water from one from oh. these trees yesterday. So yeah, the other day they were harvesting them. They were harvesting them, and I I thought they were just you know getting rid of them so they don't fall on people. <laughs> yeah. Come to find out, less than 24 hours later, they had them on the out in the plenary, and we got yeah to, in the conference, yeah. and then you could uh, they cracked them open for you. Drink and you them. a straw and have some coconut water. Well, I don't think we're going to have those at an NSPS <laughs> meeting anytime soon. So what an experience. Yeah. Well, thank you both for taking the time, not just to sit down and talk about this and and encourage others to do this. Uh, this has been a commitment to get here. Uh, 
both with, with your family, with financially, with your with your work life. Um, thank you, thank you for um, that, me, NSPS, everybody that uh, in, you've not just come, made your appearance, and left. Uh, you took it all in, yeah. and yeah. and to share that experience has been great. So, um, well, that'll wrap it up for this session. Um, we've got a few more great uh, conversations coming up. Uh, from Accra, um, uh, we'll we'll see what happens. We've got uh, a f actually uh, we've got a c actually a, a, a few other young surveyors that we're going to be talking to in the next couple of days uh, as we wind down here. Um, I think you're going to be quite intrigued by some of their stories because they're they're amazing, um, just like these two sitting here are. They're amazing as well, and um, like you both said, at the end of the day. We're all doing the same thing, just somewhere else in the world, and that's really, really cool. Yeah, yeah it makes the world uh, seem much smaller. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So, wherever you listen, hit that subscribe button, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. You've been listening to the Surveyor Says Podcast, brought to you by the National Society of Professional Surveyors. If you have any questions about today's episode or any other topic, please email us at info at nsps.us.com, and we are here to help. Visit our website, nsps.us.com, to learn more about our association, the programs we administer and support, our sustaining members, and information about future episodes of Surveyor Says. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify, as well as our podcast host, Podbean. And remember, it's a great day to be a surveyor.